back legs on, but a quiet start to the day this afternoon. Punters happy to sit in the sun. And Paul Morrison and I have come out onto the track where the runners are about to make their way out for the Neptune Investment Management Novices Hurdle. Sun continuing to beat down on this little corner of Gloucestershire. And behind us, Paul, there might be a few seats available up in the top tiers, but standing room is at a premium. It's just the most magnificent setting, isn't it? The sun, there's not a cloud in the sky. The stands are absolutely packed to capacity. They're just waiting for this wonderful day two of the festival to get underway and it's literally minutes away. Just a gentle breeze wafting across the track as the first the runners over my left shoulder prepare, prepare to head out and they're going to be led out in just a second or two's time by Burbank representing Nicky Henderson who enjoyed a good day yesterday and then behind him Paul in the green colours we've got Monsieur de Zeba Obo who tried to give way to Keepers Hill last time. Now he's a big fine specimen of a horse, great moving horse and he's the apple of his trainer's eye as well, Alan King. Now, Bon Papa is going to lead the next cluster out. The star on the cap, distinguishing the second colours of J. Burke Manus. One of the Willie Mullins contingent, Paul Townend in the saddle. And behind him, Ruby Walsh in the star jacket aboard Bacardi. Yeah, he's a big, rangy horse. He still looks a little weak to me in front. In his shoulder, you can just see he's a bit of a narrow horse, but he's got a, a really long, galloping stride. Skip the Cuddles was going through, and then the blue colours of De Dollar Man, who lost his unbeaten record last time. Yeah, the rest pouring out from, as we can see, where the, where the railings start on that race course, the chute, as we call it. This is Brelade, uh, Shattered Love coming out. I think she's very interesting. She's a big, really rangy mare. She gets the mare's allowance here. I think that'll really help her. Then we had Consul Dete in the first colours of J.P. McManus. There goes Keeper Hill through the shot, and here's the favourite, Neon Wolf. Ears pricked, that's always a great sign. Powerful back end, as you can see. And the last couple going down behind Neon Wolf, Live, Love, Laugh, who's been backed at biggish prices. I wonder if that's a Ladies' Day-inspired gamble. Runners heading off towards the two-mile five furlong shoot and the starting point for the opening race on day two of the festival. It was a brilliant first day of the festival for Nicky Henderson, a grade one double with Altior winning the Arkle and Bouverdere winning the champion hurdle, one two as well, more of that in second. How were all of your team after the first day? Uh, pretty good. good. Yeah, no, I mean, great. From, you know, they, they really weren't too, you know, it's a different place altogether and they've been through harder battles than they're ever going to experience anywhere else and I think they were pretty good so far. That's really good news. Yeah. Now you've got a couple in this race and maybe you talk us through the chance of each of them. How about Burbank first of all? He's lovely. I mean he's a, he's a young horse and he's, he's just growing up a little bit and he isn't the finished article yet but he's very talented and just experience might find him out but otherwise you know I mean he, he's you know, he'd, he might be well back here in a year's time doing all sorts of different things, but no, he should run well. And do you feel the track will suit him better than Musselburgh seems to? Yeah, that didn't suit him. It was just too tight and too short for him by upping the trip and, and, and a track like this. Yeah, very much so. And how about Consul de Tai, who is still a maiden, but a very talented one? He had a setback and missed the bet for her, or what happened there? Nothing, he just had an infection in the hind leg and it blew up enormously and it was horrible. It, it, it took us a week, but I, I mean, it, didn't, it was annoying to miss that at the time, but it hasn't affected his preparation for this and everything's gone well yes he's a maiden but he has been asked some pretty daunting questions at the same time he's actually been second to brain power twice mm. in two very very competitive handicaps which should hold him in good stead when you get into the hurly burly of this absolutely well best of luck with both of them thanks Lydia. thank you, thank you. that is consul de Tay. we haven't seen burbank we'll show you him now he looks great yeah he's got all sorts to find on official figures and what he's done, but he is definitely a horse of potential. The, it didn't suit him tracking the pace at Musselburgh last time on a day when virtually everything made all. He, he could seriously outrun his odds. And of the other Mullins runners besides Bacardi's and Bomb Papa, we've got Kenboy, who's already got a rating of 144, and Liv Luff Laugh, who has been backed in the Ritchie Colours. And Kenboy ran into the highly talented Mia Let's Dance last time and no disgrace not to, not to beat her. We'll see her later in the week. Live, Love, Laugh takes a little more explaining, I think. Uh, it did win easily last time, but only after being left clear. And I must just pop in a word for De Dollar Man, who I think is a horse of significant potential. Probably not up to this yet, but he's a, a good horse. He is. 
It is. He ran really well at Ascot. It's, you know, as always in these championship novice races, you, know, you get really good horses at big prices. Neon Wolf 2 to 1 favourite for the Neptune Investment Management Novices Hurdle. It's time to say a very good afternoon on this glorious day to Mark Johnson. Thanks very much indeed, Nick. Good afternoon, everyone. And um, what a real humdinger of a starter we've got here. And uh, Neon Wolf, only thing I can report is he was very keen on the way down to the starting point. Now the flags have been raised. They're making their way out onto the starting chute in the center of the course. Willoughby Court and also Live Love Laugh is in the front rank as they come out. And now walk forward and they're off. Day two is underway with the Neptune Investment Management, Novice Azurdal, Grade 1 and Willoughby Court will have a clear lead of a length and a half as they cross over the first flight of hurdles with Skip the Cuddles at the back of the field. He's covered up just in behind Neon Wolf racing alongside as well Consul Dute. Uh, the back marker at the moment is Poetic Rhythm and also towards the rear is Bomb Papa. They go over flight number two. Willoughby Court will lead there by two clear lengths as they crossed over it. Bomb Papa wasn't quite as fluent to some towards the rear of the field. So now a very long run before they cross over flight number three, which is taken early in the home straight. And the leader is Willoughby Court and David Bass. They handed an easy lead of two and a half lengths to De Dollerman, who's racing in second. And then Liv Love Laugh in the pale pink is racing in third as they make the downhill sweep. The favorite, Neon Wolf, is straining the reins. He's quite keen in fourth position. Towards the inside, Nessia Desobo is racing in fifth. Around the outside, Kemboy is in sixth and Skip the Cuddles in seventh. The Hoops of Keeper Hill is in eighth. The Mayor Shatter Love around the outside is in ninth, just in advance of stablemate Brillade who rounds out the first ten. On the inside, Consul Dute turns in eleventh position and then Burbank who's out quite wide as they go over flight number three. Bacardis is towards the rear of the field, so too Bon Papa and the back marker is Poetic Rhythm. Another long run now before they cross over flight number four which is taken in front of the packed enclosures here at Cheltenham in the Neptune Investment Management Novices Hurdle and it has been Willoughby Court all the way so far through the first three quarters of a mile. To Deep Dollarman racing in second position. Live Love Laugh is in third. Messia Desobo alongside Neon Wolf and then Kemboy in the two shades of blue towards the outside of Skip the Cuddles then Consul Dute who's right on the inside. He's been followed by Bacardis and Brillade and then working wide is Shattered Love as they prepare now to cross over flight number four. And Willoughby Court still had the clear lead and they're all safely over. Bacardi's just got a shake of the reins going away from that flight. So it is Willoughby Court who's out in front to De Dollarman racing in second and in third position is Live Love Love. Then in fourth place on the outside, Neon Wolf with on his inside in fifth, Messia Desoboy. Kemboy is next, followed then by the red and white of Skip the Cuddles and Consul Dute who has cut every corner. Keeper Hill is next, followed by Brillade, and then on the inside is Bacardis. Bacardis is followed by Bon Papa, and then Shattered Love, who just now begins to wander back through the field. Poetic Rhythm is still towards the rear of the pack as they go now towards the first flight down the back, and it's going to be flight number five, and Willoughby Court will have a lead here of a length and a half, and he winged that flight. Take well, Consul Dute is down, and very badly hampered was Bacardis, and also Poetic Rhythm was also hampered when we had the faller. So Consul Dute came down at flight number five. They go now towards the sixth, and the leader now as they go to it is Willoughby Court and David Bass. In second place is De Dollarman, and in third is Live Love Love, followed by Messia Desabo, and then Neon Wolf, who jumped that one particularly well. There was a bad mistake there by Keeper Hill, whose rider Gavin Sheehan went right to the buckle end of the reins. Now Shattered Love has come off the bit and is being ridden along. So now they begin to climb towards the top of the hill. They're well inside the final mile now of the Neptune Investment Management Novices Hurdle and it is still Willoughby Court jumps that flight really well to De Dollarman who took it in second place Live Love Laugh is in third but now he's been joined by Neon Wolf who begins to make a bit of a move squeezed upon the inside rail was Messia Desobo then Bon Papa who's picking up one or two places Kemboy on his outside then Brulade as they begin to make the run down the hill skip the cuddles and then Burbank the others now are 
are struggling as they race down now towards a third from home and Willoughby Court now is turning up the heat but it's Neon Wolf now who is coming to take dead aim on his outside they go over the third from home Willoughby Court had the lead over Neon Wolf and Messia Desovo Kenboy is out very wide staying on Bonpapa tries to barge his way through with a high head carriage as they come down now towards the second from home and Willoughby Court it now has the looming presence of Neon Wolf on his outside Messia Desavo tried to get right through on the inside rail but the door was slammed in his face now he has to rally as they make the turn Willoughby Court digs in Neon Wolf pounces on the outside relayed his next followed on the inside by Messia Desavo and then Kemboy they race down towards the final flight Willoughby Court really game all heart as he takes the last and he jumps it better than Neon Wolf who now has a length and a half to find he's got a half furlong to get now to the long time leader but Willoughby Court is really battling Neon Wolf is charging here comes the line tight Willoughby Court on the near side Neon Wolf on the far side and back in third Messia Desobo in a thrilling finish to the Neptune investment the wheel of fortune has turned spectacularly for David Bass down and out at the second last fence on Sharba when running a blinder in the Arkle yesterday. He has won the opening race, though it's officially a photo, on Willoughby Court to give Ben Pauling a festival winner, a first festival winner. Willoughby Court wore his heart on his sleeve and made all the running and dug in so deeply. He has beaten Neon Wolf, who pitched on Here landing at the last. Come off the photo finish for first place. First, number 14, Willoughby, Willoughby Court. Court is confirmed the winner. The roar from the crowd would doubtless have been louder had the verdict gone the other way, but Neon Wolf has run very well indeed in defeat. Willoughby Court wins the first for Ben Pauling and David Bass, and you can only be thrilled for the man on board. Yeah, it swings in roundabouts, isn't it? Down yesterday with Charbel, but this afternoon right back on top and... I, if, you, if he hadn't pecked at the last, just that slight stumble, Neon Wolf, he might he probably would have won. Um, Messi at his over will certainly would have finished closer, but for being squeezed at the top of the hill and trying to get through the inside at the bottom. But what a fantastic front running performance. Ben Pauling wore a heart monitor during the running of the first race yesterday when he ran High Bridge, who was never really in the hunt. His heart rate went up to 180 beats per minute. I'm not sure if they're sending for the stretches now, but this will have got him going a little more keenly, I, I rather suspect. What a wonderful horse race to start the opening day. Brilliant race, Nick, yeah, and we talk about ups and downs for the jockey David Bass from yesterday, ups and downs for the trainer over the course of the season as well. Think back to the autumn, they lost Barters Hill for the season, didn't they, when he... Uh, failed to complete earlier on in the season on his chasing debut and Willoughby Court has uh, come good for them at the festival today and I'm sure it's the first of what will be many winners over the course of the next years to come for, for Ben Pauling. And Harry Fry and Noel Feely, they will consider themselves perhaps a little unfortunate. Neon Wolf had to switch after that slightly ungainly landing at the last. You couldn't call it a mistake, but the margins are so fine in a championship race like this. They are, yeah. And he jumped the flight perfectly just on landing. <laughs> the, winning the winning trainer, <laughs> up to 250, we reckon. <laughs> Hugs to his wife, Sophie, oh, yeah. huge team effort. Well done to them. And great for David Bass. And this horse went along and set a lovely swinging gallop up front. He had many of them in trouble between three and four out. And unlike the Supreme yesterday, Martin, it was a race which really broke open in dramatic style. It did, yeah. And we talk about likeable horses. Well, this, you couldn't get much more likeable a performance than this. What an attitude he's shown. He's been tackled from the, the third last, really, and he's just kept on finding and finding that little bit more. He looked like he had Neon Wolf going down to the last. Then, briefly, 100 yards out, you think that Neon Wolf has got him, but he just finds that extra little bit all of the time, Nick, and it's such a likeable performance. We've got a great two winner, previous grade two winner winning the race, a previous grade two winner finishing second in the race and a grade one winner in third amongst the bricks. The form looks like it stacks up and what a thrilling race it was to start the day. It was a, a tremendous race. You can understand Willoughby Court just getting a little bit tired on the running but he was on vapours by this stage and was pulling out as much as he possibly could. We talked a lot yesterday Jonathan about 
trainers at the festival and why Nicky Henderson was so good and he's trained 57 winners. The switch back to hurdles with Bouver Dare, the decision to go chasing with with Altior, the decisions not everyone would have made. Here, Ben Pauling, the obvious race was the Albert Bartlett, yeah. but he, having been bitten in that race last year, was shy this time of going there, and this was the right call. It was, it was not only the right call, but it was also the right tactics. Uh, for all that you know, they were racing hard over the last three quarters of a mile, he didn't set a very strong pace. And you know, it's clear, you know, he's made all the running. The second and third have been in the first four or five throughout, and nothing's got into it from the back because it's a race that's favoured those who are up there throughout. And continuing the remarkable rise of Paul and Claire Rooney, in whose colours this horse runs. Ben trains a number of horses for them. They've enjoyed great success this year with Fergal O'Brien and a number of other trainers, but it's a crowning moment. Last Samurai, second in last year's Grand National. My Dreamboat winning the Group 1 at Royal Ascot. Another, another big day for them. It's a huge day for them, isn't it? Yeah, they've invested an awful lot of of money and time into it over the last three or four years under both codes so it's fantastic for them to get to get a winner at the Cheltenham Festival as well and can, they've got a lot to look forward to this, with, with this horse as well he's, he's, he's not only got the ability and the attitude he's got the physique to go on and, and probably jump fences in time as well but um, you know he's an exciting horse as is Neon Wolf just defeat today doesn't take anything away from his potential yes it's the first time that he's been beaten in his life but it's the narrowest of narrow margins uh, been beaten by a head it, I think he would have won wouldn't he if he hadn't of, 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 as you say just skew with really at the last the last he loses momentum and it's credit to him that he actually battles right to the line up the hill as well um, in the manner that he did David Bass has tasted it before Ben Pauling hasn't and he is going to hug and kiss just about everyone who who would like to receive his affections on the way back in I fancy yeah, hardly surprising is it it's uh, he's still very much at the beginning of his career as a trainer and he's he's made a very strong impact at it as well no surprise that he is a, a pupil of the henderson academy as well and clearly has learnt plenty from the master of training festival winners 23 and a half hours ago david bass had tears in his eyes the only tears now are those of unconfined joy as he wins the Neptune Investments Novices Hurdle. Now, I'm afraid that Consul de Tay, as you saw there briefly, was a faller down the far side. The horse ambulance, the veterinary team attending to Consul de Tay will bring you news on him just as soon as we get it. And that fall was a significant one, not just for him, but also because it essentially put pay to the chances of Bacardi's and Poetic Rhythm, Bacardi's most significantly. Yeah, I mean, he was second favourite and he was... He had no chance after that incident. I just hope that, I mean, it did look a really unpleasant fall. Now, fingers crossed for Consul de Tay and also, just as importantly, uh, for Mark Walsh, who, who rode Consul de Tay and hasn't had the best of luck in seven races so far. But fortunes have turned for this man, David Bass. It's a local winner. He'll be roared into the winner's enclosure. Willoughby Court takes the Neptune. Wonderful, just wonderful. He hit the cross bear bar on a number of occasions last time. Last year did Ben Pauling, notably with Barters Hill in the Albert Bartlett. And he, I was lucky enough to go down there in February to visit the yard. And the faith in Willoughby Court was extremely high. He really, really rates this horse and sees him better over further. And this is what he's done over two miles five. He's won the Neptune and he's done it all the way from the front, the hard way, 14 to 1, the price. David Bass's second festival win after Dana two years ago, a first for Ben Paul. And congratulations to Paul and Claire Rooney, the winning owners. Neon Wolf, gallant in second, going down by a head, the 2 to 1 favourite. Messier des Obeaux, 8 to 1 in third. And all 15 ran in our Neptune. And it could yet get better for Ben Pauling if... Slightly different scale, this, because it, the same connections, Paul and Claire Rooney, you can see there, horse number two, Calva Deneur, 
and Ben Pauling will no doubt see a recording of this race because I'm sure he's going to be in there celebrating. Calvadonor looks to have a decent chance, was behind Burbank over course and distance recently, who we saw running in the Neptune there. Putting green, though, the 9-4 to favourite and well-supported Christmas in April, 5-2. to Calvadonor, we've just seen 9-2. to So Celebra, who was well-fancied and has form lines with some in the Fred Winter, is 